This is why we care so much about AFib. We care about detecting it. We care about diagnosing it in people so that we can prevent strokes from happening. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lay. I'm a cardiologist. And today we're going to be talking about atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib, is an abnormal, irregular heartbeat that's caused by an abnormal electrical impulse from the top of your heart. Usually, an electrical impulse causes your heart to contract every second, usually 60 to 90 beats per minute. Atrial fibrillation is when an abnormal electrical impulse starts making your heart contract very rapidly and irregularly. Clots can form in the top of your heart. When clots form in the top of the heart and then they get pumped out to the rest of the body, clots can go to the brain and cause a stroke. Not everyone who has AFib is at high risk for having a stroke. For that, you should consult your doctor and your cardiologist to see whether or not you are at risk. AFib can cause your heart to become weak. It can cause heart failure, a heart attack. It can cause you to feel really, really bad and cause a lot of complications down the line. Atrial flutter, it's a different type of rhythm that is caused from a different part of the heart, but it's so close enough to AFib and it causes the same symptoms and very similar risk of stroke that we treat them very similarly. AFib can sometimes cause symptoms, and other times it might not even cause symptoms at all. The symptoms that patients can often get are lightheadedness, dizziness, palpitations, the feeling of your heart beating fast or beating out of your chest, chest pain, or shortness of breath. If you'd like more information on that, you can click on the link below to sign up for our newsletter. For patients who come to me with a recent diagnosis of AFib, or if I diagnose you with AFib, there are two things that I care about most. One, are you having symptoms? Are these symptoms bad? Are they affecting you? Are they affecting your way of life? And then number two, are you at low risk for having a stroke? Are you at high risk for having a stroke? And how do I prevent you from getting a stroke? That's what I care about the most. So let's talk about what that means. In most cases, if you were diagnosed with AFib, it's something that's gonna affect you for the rest of your life. It doesn't ever really go away. However, the good thing is there are many ways to manage AFib. Patients who were recently diagnosed with AFib can go in and out of an irregular heart rhythm. You can be in AFib and then return to a regular heart rhythm. Some people stay in that irregular rhythm for longer periods of time. If you're in an irregular heart rhythm, you tend to have more symptoms. And then if you return to a regular heart rhythm, you tend to have less symptoms. When you have symptoms, that's important to be treated. Lifestyle changes, such as eating better, having more exercise, controlling your alcohol consumption there are procedures you can do to help eliminate AFib and reduce its symptoms. Other ways can be medications. If you are at high risk for having a stroke, it's actually recommended that you take a blood thinning medication. Blood thinning medications reduce the chances of having clot formation in the top of the heart and can reduce the risk of having a stroke. In very extreme cases, AFib won't be able to be controlled by medications and patients still remain symptomatic. Not all hope is lost. Nowadays, there are many catheter-based ablation procedures, procedures that go through the vein and the groin and up to the heart that can help eliminate AFib. Want to learn more about maintaining or improving your heart health? Visit the description box for more helpful resources. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lay, and for more videos like this from Healthline, click like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.